Good afternoon. By show of hands, who didn't attend the 2 o'clock session? One. Awesome. So we could go through and do basically the same presentation we did at 2 o'clock for the rest of you that were already here. They want me in the light. Or, alternatively, Matt and I can share what it was like to transition for us and field any questions that you all have about the transition process, what it's like to work at Amazon, any stories that you have. So we'd invite everybody to come up to the front. It'll be a little bit more intimate. We won't go through the slide deck. If you're interested about anything Amazon related, Matt and I will do our best job to explain it from our perspective. Neither one of us are HR professionals. Neither one of us are certified public relations specialists. We are operators, hiring managers, and we run operations for Amazon Web Services. Uh, Matt's background is with the NSA and the government. I was a Marine for a little, over, a little under a decade and spent some time in the government contracting space. So if everybody'd like, come on up closer to the, the stage so we can actually see the people who are asking us questions. Uh, and I'll turn it over to Matt if you want to share your transition and I'll share mine and we can start fielding some questions. Sure, I hope my story doesn't vary from what I just said an hour ago because that would be <laughs> very disingenuous. I hope I can remember what I said. Um, as, I, as I told the earlier crowd, and I think some of you are still in the crowd, um, as Mike alluded to, I just retired uh, from, the, from the Marine Corps after 24 years of service, um, both enlisted and officer. I, I left uh, the military 10 months ago, and if someone asked me what I would be doing 10 months from now, I, I would not have said standing on stage you know, representing Amazon, but yet here I am. And I'm very proud to say I'm doing that. Um, the, uh, what I'm doing today, how I got here, and what I did prior, you know, everybody's got a different story and a different path. And it's, there's no silver bullet, there's no right or wrong way. It's uh, perseverance, well, it's timing, it's a well-placed referral sometimes, it's, it's all of those things. And it's, it's how you craft your story and, and create your value prop. And at the end of the day, that's what's going to get your, your foot in the door. Um, the, as Mike said, I'm, I'm a, we're, we're ops managers. I'm an ops manager for a team of, of six folks. And um, the great thing about Amazon is I, I'm told, I mean, I have first world problems here. You know, I'm not hiring fast enough. That's kind of unheard of. You, know? you don't hear that in industry. Usually it's, do I have a job the next day? How many people do I need to let go? My problem is I can't hire fast enough. And part of that is a function of trying to find people that can make it through the Amazon hiring process, and also just making sure you got the right people on your team. And then also at my space, you have to you have to meet certain clearance requirements to support the customer set that we have. But um, I did a career in Marine Corps intelligence, and so my background lended itself, I think, fairly well to the space that they've put me in. I was brought aboard Amazon. I originally interviewed probably for ten different positions, and Nine of those ten, now that I'm on the inside looking out, I know why they didn't hire me. <laughs> I was clearly applying to the wrong positions. You don't know that as a person transitioning sometimes. You can read a rec all day long and not really know what it means. And now that I'm on the inside and I see how technical some of these positions are, I'm like, well, clearly I, I didn't fit that. No wonder they didn't hire me. But the great thing about Amazon is that you get recycled. And if they see something in you that's unique and you can fit their culture, they're not going to put you in the no pile. They're going to put you in the let's see what else we can do with him pile. And so as hiring managers, we're encouraged to do that. And so while I gave up on Amazon, they didn't give up on me. And I got a call about uh, four or five months into my job search from them going, hey, we still want to talk to you. Um, would you be interested in coming in and interviewing with us? So a couple phone screens later, there I was being interviewed for a commercial position as an ops manager, and um, during the process of the interview, another cool thing that Amazon does is while they're interviewing you, they may go, what else can he, you know, we got him in here, and you know, even though we're interviewing him, we don't think he's right for this position, but we got him this far, let's see if we can plug him into something else. And so they said, would you like to be an ops manager for this new thing that we have supporting the intelligence community since you have a clearance, right? I said, yeah, I do. Um, what if we create this position for, yeah, do it. <laughs> you got me, you had me at, do you want to? So, um, so here I am. And so again, I couldn't, when people, when my peers ask me how I got to where I am today, you know, 10 months after, you know, straight out of the Marine Corps, really, working at Amazon, how'd that happen? Um, 
I don't really have a good answer for them. It's, there's no right way, you know, I don't know how I got here, but, uh, <laughs> um, but the transition course helped, you know, the Marine Corps and all the services have a good, you know, I think system of helping folks get out. And then on the, on the flip side, uh, Amazon and a lot of companies like Amazon are very uh, dedicated to supporting veterans and, and helping us transition in. But once you're in, it's on you. I mean, thank you for your service. Sometimes that's lip service, you know, and I didn't come into this expecting anything or, or any special treatment being from the military. It helped me. I leveraged it. Um, I got to where I am because of it, and it certainly serves me well, I think, in my current job. But um, the, the fact that I was military isn't really, doesn't come up on a daily basis other than being teased from time to time by my peers. But, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's, not a, it's, not, I, it's not a function, it's not something I think about every day as I'm walking around Amazon hallways. And when I know. email him asking him to come join yeah. me on stage. Yes. <laughs> you were yes. We do participate in a lot of these events, and as Mike said, you know, we're not recruiters or, hire, or HR, but we do, um, because of our backgrounds, have an affinity for these kind of things, and, and, and it gets us out of the office, and we love doing it. So, um, but I want to make this interactive, and again, if you have any questions, I'd love to answer those. Um, specifically, you have more. Yeah. Uh, what's a day in the life like? I mean, I know some yeah. military is just in civilian, but uh, what's a person yeah. do? What's the typical? Yeah, it's a great question because you know there's no. Um, and during the interview process, I like to I get asked that a lot by candidates. You know, what give me a day in the life? Um, a day in the life is big boy rules. There's no manager waiting for me to get clock in at 7:30. And if guess what? If I cap, if I have to work from home one day because, you know. Uh, my kid's sick, I'm going to work from home, I'm going to VPN in. Um, but when I say it's big, it's not, it's not nine to five, and it's not five days a week, it's you work to get the job done. And, but a day in life, I'm glad, <laughs> I, I'm glad during the transition course I didn't follow all their instructions and go out and buy 17 different suits. Yeah. Because I'm a fairly senior manager, and this is the expectation. In fact, anything higher than this, I'd be looked at strangely, you know. Um, now, that's not to say when I go to a customer site, I don't button up, you know, I get I get I put a suit on because that's the culture of that particular customer. But um, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, it's a very, I don't want to say relaxed, it's a collegiate environment. It's a it's a fun place to work, literally fun. I mean, we're talking, the only, I, I'm not getting shot at it anymore other than by the occasional <laughs> Nerf gun from a guy running down the hallway in Birkenstocks. Um, so, you know, that's the biggest risk other than the kegerator on every floor. Those are the biggest occupational risks that I have. Um, so, great place to work. It's a fun place to work. And our motto is, you know, work hard, have fun, and make history. And we do that. And, um, and we make sure when we're hiring people, or at least when I do, that they're going to fit the, uh, fit not just Amazon's culture, but they're going to they're gonna have fun here. You know, we don't want somebody who's going to be stiff and not be able to adapt and that is a transition, you know, coming from the, there's a certain mentality, you know, people are going to think, oh, that guy was a Marine or he was a soldier, he was an airman, he's not going to fit in here. Y you can do it, you know, you can, you can make yourself do it, and it's not that hard. I don't look back. I mean, w one of the things I don't regret is I got out of the military on my terms, and I got out when it was right for me. Um, and so I don't miss it. There's things about it that, yeah, sure, you know, you there's a camaraderie factor and stuff like that, but you know you can make you can make that anywhere you go, and so I just don't miss it. One of the I things that's, that's very unique yeah. to Amazon is we experience the dynamism of a scrappy startup company under the protections of a Fortune 500. So we every day come in and it is get the job done, make it happen, and. What that job is, is self-defined. It's always looking for, I mentioned in the two o'clock, our virtuous cycle. It's looking for those opportunities where we can do better by our customers. Uh, I manage a team of support engineers. Uh, so if you're an Amazon Web Services customer and you pay for premium support, you could call in and talk to one of my engineers. And the, their day-to-day, -day, their daily life is to come in and solve big problems. Because the person calling, isn't a desktop user. It's not, it's not the secretary who can't map to her printer. It's the chief technology officer of a, of a company. 
It's somebody who knows what they're talking about on the other end of that line that's challenging you to make their equipment work. Our customers are varied and large. Uh, Netflix, Pinterest, all, all successful because of the support work that our engineers have done. And we don't take that for granted. Uh, Matt is championing adoption by the intelligence community to work in the cloud. It's, unprecedented in any sort of government initiative to take on IT in the past. They're consolidating all of their data centers into a single resource. They're taking advantage of our services, and we don't take that sort of thing lightly. We understand, we put ourselves with those customers and think to ourselves, how would I want it done? So the data life is really just putting ourselves in the shoes of our customers, figuring out what is gonna make them successful and doing everything within our power to make that outcome happen. Uh, it, it varies from role to role. Uh, one thing that's pretty consistent is about two o'clock, I think the dart war starts up on my floor. So two o'clock strikes, the phones kind of go quiet because Dallas or Seattle picks it up and the darts start flying. So it is a very have fun culture. It's, we understand that if we were all robots and we were trying to just churn out and help customers, it would just start to feel like a call center. Nobody likes working in a call center. So Matt talks about the occupational hazard of the keg on every floor. You know what I see very rarely? People tapping into that keg. It's not something that you would, you would think uh, on, on your shoulders, wow, they put beer on every floor? Their engineers must be drunk all the time. And it's true for some, I don't, know, I don't know about Matt's team, but I very rarely see engineers going out and pouring themselves a pint. But when they need it, they get it, and they use it responsibly. We treat our employees like adults. We don't micromanage or supervise them, we let them loose. One of the, one of the greatest things, when you, have, when you are surrounding yourself by wicked, smart, talented people, and you just unleash them on problems, they're always gonna surprise you because they're not gonna solve your problem. They're gonna uncover other problems and solve them too. Uh, so that's the day in the life. It's, it's constantly witness, it's bearing witness to an awesome display of, of character, a high caliber of talent, and seeing problems get solved every day. Um, and it's neat, it's, it's cool to, to manage that type. It's one of the easiest jobs I've ever had. I tell each and every one of my engineers, my sole purpose in life at work is to encourage their success. I need to remove their obstacles. So I spend my time uncovering what's gonna prevent them from growing and try to eliminate it, whether that's getting them training, whether that's getting them redirecting some of their efforts and initiatives, or if it's just trying to, to calm an irate customer because we missed a phone call. It, that's my job. I, I go in and I, I intervene to, to make sure that they're happy and successful because they're gold to me. Uh, they're gold to our company. So that's, that's looking at it from the engineer perspective. A day in the life of a, of a fulfillment associate, uh, the, the people who pack the boxes for Amazon Prime is gonna be very different. But one thing that unifies us, one thing that is consistent is our, is our motto. Working hard, having fun, and making history. And, and we're all, we all have a common guiding beacon in our leadership principles. As long as we're demonstrating bias for action, we're delivering results, we're insisting on the highest standards, and every one of us are doing it, we're guaranteed success. It's a, it's a very cool dynamic place to work. Uh, so that's a day in the life. Uh, are there any other questions, something, something interactive? Sir? I do miss 72s every other week, it seems. Oh, yeah, I, can, I, I can take that. Um, when you say benefits, you mean uh, medical, dental, health, days off, things like that? Yeah, I mean, you're coming from the government, you're used to your 10 federal holidays, you know, you're gonna go get used to six, yeah. you know? You're coming out of the military, you have your 30 days to leave a year, get used to two weeks, and then by your second year at Amazon, you'll have three, but that's, that's kind of an industry, industry standard. That's not too different than most companies. Um, I'm a retiree. Mike did not do a full 20, so he didn't retire. So what I do and what he do are probably different. I didn't take Amazon's medical because I have TRICARE. Do I get any additional pay for that? No. I mean, 
is that a negotiation point for me in the salary conversation to go, well, I'm not taking your, no, it was not. It was, here's, this, here's, here's your offer, take it or leave it. The <laughs> fact that you have military benefits, wonderful, buddy. You know, use them. But, uh, so I do. I did take their, their dental and I took their vision because they're better packages than TRICARE. So it was a Chinese menu, if you will, of benefits that I could pick and choose and, you know, uh, but I think they're great. You know, I'm, there's a, you know, you get your standard PTO and your, and your personal days and all those things. Uh, it was, that was not a hard transition point for me, you know, um, especially since when I transitioned, I took 90 days of my terminal <laughs> leave. So I was just dying to get back to work, you know. I didn't know what to do with myself. Um, Our 401k so, yeah. is, is very similar yeah. across industry. Uh, we provide 50% matching up to 2% of total salary yeah. in Amazon stock. So that may not mean a lot uh, while you're getting the 2%, but when AWS releases its financial figures and the stock shoots up 40% overnight, yeah. all of that previous investment starts to look a lot nicer than 2%. And, and Amazon is an ownership company, so they work yeah. off of a total compensation model. So it's a combination of salary, signing bonus, and then restricted stock units. Yeah. So you know, they look at it from a total comp perspective, not you know, just one big salary and then be happy. And then you, of course, get additional stock units as you continue along, and they, be, they vest over a certain period of time. And so uh, I, I have no complaints. You know, yeah. I think it's great. You know, none at all. Yeah, it was a no-brainer for me. Yeah. The, uh, the one thing that I hear from candidates that, that disillusions them sometimes when they're interviewing are our lack of education benefits. So, but we counter that by saying, Amazon doesn't put a lot of weight into degrees or certifications. We hire based on demonstrable skills. We want to be able to know that you can execute and you can deliver results. Having a piece of paper that says that you learned how to deliver results is, is fine, it's wonderful, but we usually see a lot of pieces of paper that are just that. So we, we don't place value in it. Um, there are opportunities at, that are driven down to the manager level. Matt sent a, one of his engineers or technical account managers to go get a CISSP because it was of value to our customer. It was customer obsessed. It was not certificate obsessed. The customer wanted to see technical account managers with a CISSP, so we delivered on that promise to our customer. It wasn't about getting the certificate. If our customer wanted a manager with an MBA, we would probably look for a manager with an MBA. But by and large, we don't place a lot of stock in that. So that is one of the downsides. You know, we're, we're a very transparent company. That would be the only thing that I would say is a deterrent for anybody looking to join Amazon for its benefits. Um, but along those lines, Amazonians don't join Amazon for the benefits. They're just that, they're, they're the plus. They're the bonus that, that most of us never even encountered. We see a lot of our candidates that are taking substantial pay drops just to say, I'm part of Amazon. I'm a part of a cutting edge company that is at the forefront of technology. We're pioneering industry, which is unlike a lot of other companies with great benefits. Um, when I was being recruited into the Marine Corps, and I, and I think of benefits in the, much the same way, uh, I was walking home because a buddy abandoned me at a Honda dealership because he was shopping for a car. And as I was walking home, a Marine recruiter in his dress blue deltas drove up, offered me a ride for the extra mile and a half home. I obliged and I agreed that I'd come talk to him about joining the Marine Corps uh, as a result of this exchange. When I got to the recruiting station, I was walking through a gauntlet of other service recruiters. There was the Navy, the Air Force, the Army had half of the building and each one of them were coming in, just clawing at me like feral cats, just wanting to get a piece of the 17 year old me that looked like I was, I was hungry for action. And I finally got through the gauntlet. At some point I was offered 50 grand and to be a helicopter pilot by some Army recruiter who obviously didn't know what the requirements were to be a helicopter pilot. And I got to the, the Marine that was recruiting me, and he looked at me, I sat across from him, and he asked, why do you want to be a Marine? And I was taken aback. I was, what do you mean, why do I want to be a Marine? You asked me to come here. This was a part of our handshake deal for the mile and a half ride. I mean, why, do I, why, do you, why should I join the Marine Corps? I had an Army guy just now offer me 50 grand in a helicopter pilot license. 
And he sat back in his chair. Staff Sergeant Nathan Lingo, I'll never, Lingo, I'll never forget his name. And he looks at me, he's like, you know what that 50 grand is? That's an advertisement. Marines don't need to advertise, they sell themselves. And, and I was hooked. Like, the guy did a really good job, but Amazon's much the same way. Like, benefits, 401k, all of those are just that. They're benefits. Um, we, we, are, we call ourselves Amazonians for a reason. Like, we, we believe in the company. We believe in the culture. And that sounds a little bit like we've drank the Kool-Aid, but, but Joel here in the front has said, but the Kool-Aid tastes really good. <laughs> and, and it's true. Like, we have. We've drank the Kool-Aid because it does taste really good. So that, that's a bit of a summary of our benefits, but w not a lot of us take a lot One of One thing we do in. really well is hide, the, hide our salaries. I mean, if you go on Indeed, good luck. Yeah. I, mean, I, I couldn't find, couldn't find anything. anything that represented reality, you know, and, and what the salary compensation model was for, for Amazon on Indeed. They're all wrong, I will tell you. So um, yeah. don't go off of any of that. But, you know. but at the same, that, that being said, uh, they compensate well enough where they like to take, what they, what they like to say is we take money off the table. You yeah. know, we don't want to make that part of your daily, you know, psyche when you come to work. Yeah. We want you to work and have fun and not be worried about, am, are they, am I getting paid enough? So, you know. Any other questions? Questions about the culture? More questions about the company? Yes. They're told to, they're told to dress like this oh, actually, yeah. for the oh, interview. They okay. They're told don't wear a suit. Yeah, okay. explicitly. And, and in fact, when they come wearing something that's close to a suit, yeah. you, then they're not following instructions. <laughs> um, you know, so <laughs> then they're looked at differently. Okay. But, uh, but <laughs> I was very curious because I know somebody who. It's a hard thing to get over too. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a hard thing to you, you think you, you think they're playing you and you think this must be a test. Right. I asked Matt it to come here today in a t-shirt. You have to just have, you know. <laughs> I know someone who, um, you know. interviewed for, because yeah. the same company for the same job twice. The first time he went, you know, he dressed with his suit. Yeah. He didn't get the job. Yeah. Second time he went a month later, the interviewer wore a gym clothes and yeah. a polo shirt, <laughs> and he got the job. And, yeah. and, and they asked him, they said, they asked him, so why did you tell me the first time? I'd be reluctant to say that we made a decision based on yeah, attire. Me too. Yeah, There's a cultural fit aspect to it, but no one's going to take it to that extreme, I don't think. But, um, you know, and I wore a button down, you know, because I was, like, in the middle. I wasn't sure. But uh, I will tell you, I, you know, I think I'm, inter you know, when you're, when you're on an interview, you're interviewing that company just as much as they're interviewing you. Yeah. And, you know, I was taken aback. One of the guys was wearing flip-flops and... And a you know a Phineas and Ferb T-shirt, and <laughs> I'm like, you know what? And he's a manager, senior manager, um, and I'm like, I don't know, you know, do I want to work? What's going on here? And uh, you know, turns out this guy was also a former Marine, which really now that I know, I was like, geez, you know, what is going on here? I love this place, but uh, yeah. so yeah, it's you know, some people take it to extremes, but that's in all walks of life, so. You know, it's just, uh, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned the fact that you put on survival mode for your team. Yes. And you recently retired. How did you deal with that culture shift of being rigid? And yeah. Well, see, that's a misconception, I think, too. And I don't think it's, I, I think that where you're, where you're at in the military, you can be very, it can be very Napoleonic and rigid. I had the, I had the luxury of, um, working the last phase of my career, I worked a lot of intelligence agency stuff, so I was already working with a lot of civilians. I was also working in special operations community, which is flat by, by nature. And so I may have had a leg up of, from a mindset perspective of transitioning into an organization like this. So I was used to that. But yeah, you're right. You can come from a very rigid, you know, and you see that a lot with, with, the, with the junior enlisted guys, you know, a lot of times. But I'll, and I don't want to make that sound bad because, you know, I will tell you that the junior enlisted guys have a much better pitch when they come to the recruiting table than the officers do. You know, I can spot a lieutenant colonel 
30 yards away, coming my way, getting ready to tell me how he doesn't want to work really hard and he wants a desk with a secretary. And I'm going to steer, I'm going to just wave him off. But, uh, you know, um, the, I don't know that there's, there's, there's no right answer to that. You know, how do you deal with that transition? It's, it's uh, could, can someone come from that kind of environment and transition into this? Yeah, I think they could. Um, but they're going to have to work a little bit harder um, to soften their edges. And, uh, you know, I'm still that way. This is my wife, by the way, sitting up here. She knows how, you know, I am. And I can be very rigid, very organized and set in my ways. But, uh, you know, when I put the Amazon shirt on, I loosen up a little bit. But, um, you know, um, I don't know that there's any right answer to that. It's you've got to, as an intelligence officer, you know, look at the landscape. What are you walking into? You know, you should be able to pick up on cues. And some of those cues when you walk into an interview phase like this is they're not looking for a person who only follows instructions. They're looking for someone who can come up with instructions and write the instructions and uh, come up with new instructions. So it's, it's, you can't teach that, I don't think. You can talk about it, but you can't teach it. You have to experience it and you have to make some mistakes. And I think that someone who comes from that rigid mentality or, or background is going to have to make some, may have to take another job somewhere else and then realize that to get to this kind of organization, you have to change some of the way you are, you know. Which is exactly what I did. Yeah. Uh, I had a much different uh, experience transitioning out of the military service. It was very structured. I was a staff sergeant. I was, I was the guy who was just a jerk to everybody I saw, and uh, it, was, it was about respecting the culture. It was a very, very tough uh, place to be transitioning at that point. And I remember, because I worked hard in my, my enlisted service, I knew that uh, the job field when I was getting out was not going to be ready for me or I wasn't going to be ready for it without degrees. I was, I was in the same position many people are. When I said Amazon doesn't care about pieces of paper, I thought every other company did. So I got my undergrad and graduate degree. I got my MBA while I was still on active duty. And it wasn't easy. It, it, there were a lot of sacrifices that were made, but I knew I had it, so I knew I could do something. And through the, the execution of that, of that MBA, I thought business, consulting, this is, this is where I'm gonna be. Uh, I interviewed for a big five consulting firm they brought me out and I went through their, their gamut of interview process, which basically works a project for them. And I was going crazy. The, the hippies of this particular group were just so laissez-faire and so corrupt and so vindictive in the way that they wanted to just keep earning money and being greedy and figuring out ways to, to rake as much cash from the companies that they were consulting for. Uh, drove me nuts. There was no discipline. It wasn't structured. It was very difficult to do. So I knew, for me, I wasn't going to be ready to just join the civilian workforce. And what Matt recommended is maybe you need another job in between, which is why I found myself at the defense contractor. Uh, I got the phone call. I was given the offer. And it was for the very group that I was leaving. So I never really left the Marine Corps. And during my three and a half years working for the contractor, I started to chip away at that discipline. I used to think to myself, I'm like, wow, you guys are getting up and going to a formation at 07 to go on a really long run. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sleep in my PJs. And I'm going to wake up when I want to wake up and go to work and do the job that I need to do. So it was very valuable for me, that three and a half year break of very regimented work to a little bit more uh, interactive, a little bit more work. I was working with civilians with no military background. It was a nice conditioning for, for what I found at Amazon. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I, I got a little disillusioned by it, though, because it wasn't the same camaraderie. It wasn't the same type of work environment where you just felt surrounded by the best all the time. Uh, and that's why I landed here, and I feel very comfortable. So the uh, we're not regimented. We're not hierarchical. We're very flat. But those are all the things that I craved while I was in the service. I was like, you know, if only I were the CEO for a day. If, I, if only I could be in charge, these, this would be so much better because common sense will prevail. And Amazon is that place where common sense prevails. It, the, the lowest level engineer can come up with the greatest idea and it will be implemented, it will be heard. Matt talked about our narrative process. That isn't something that managers write. 
Narratives come from every employee in the organization. You have a good idea, write it down. We just had a contest for Think Big Ideas where any Amazonian could submit an idea to improve a product, improve a service, something on behalf of our customers, and they're awarded for it. And it, they come from all walks of life within Amazon. So not only is it just permitted, it's encouraged, which is very, very, it's interesting to see when, you, when you're on the outside looking in, you're like, wow, they're, they're just encouraging everybody to do everything. Um, I'll also, I'll, I'll tell you how, how, how connected, um, you know, Jeff Bezos who runs Amazon, you may have heard of him. Um, this guy, he'll, he'll go nuts over 14 cents. Yeah. I mean, if a customer loses 14 cents and is upset about that, that's, it doesn't matter. The, the dollar value doesn't matter. It's the fact that the customer is upset. And then you'll see, see a cascade effect of emails. And all it is is one email from Jeff Bezos with a question mark to his managers. And then it just, it just peels out from there. What happened? Postmortem. Let's get this fixed. I mean, that, that guy is still very connected. He's not some aloof CEO sitting on an island somewhere. I mean, he's sure someone's um, triaging his email for him, but you know, floating up the, the really sensitive ones. But he's responding. I mean, there's there's no doubt about that. And things happen very fast here when things are not going well for a customer, and that's motivating. I mean, everything's driven toward that. That's the good thing about this place. You know what your goals are. You know, you know. You don't need a lot of guidance because the principles are there. You know you. You know that everything else can fail. You can do everything else wrong as long as you're doing something right for the customer. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're on the right track. You know, you can forget every other leadership principle that you were taught here at Amazon. But if customer obsession is not forgotten and you're working on that goal, you're doing okay. So um, that's pretty neat, you know, because you, you you know you can't go wrong when you're doing that, and you know a company that does that kind of thing and, and focuses on that can't go wrong. So and I think that's why we succeed. So Matt, one of the things that, that you and I have probably encountered, and you always do a really good job of explaining it when we're at these events, are the, the red flags that we see coming out of transitioning military or former veterans. Uh, we're in front of a government audience, the public yeah. sector audience, and I know that especially for things like usajobs.gov and some of the transition courses where they say every single duty station, every single responsibility, 50 page resumes, um, can you speak to that a little yeah, bit yeah, in order to enhance the transition? Sure. Um, yeah, that's, that's just, uh, you know, resume 101, but, you know, that's never never easy either, especially for a young person coming out of the military or even an old person coming out of the military. Uh, the red flags I see are just, yeah, I mean, you stick to the, the guidelines. Two pages is, is too much, you know, or two pages is the max, you know. Because, uh, oh, by the way, you don't spend money on great paper. Because <laughs> once it gets scanned into our great system, it all looks like HTML. Um, <laughs> we have to work really hard on our end to make it look pretty again so we can read it. So content, function over form. Um, the things that need to rise to the top on a resume for us are, you know, you're, yeah, you can, you know, you've got chronological resumes and you've got your functional resumes. I don't really care which one you're giving me. What I care is, I've, you've got six seconds to impress me, because I've got 60 resumes I got to look at, and if, and if, I, if not, you haven't caught my attention within the first six seconds, I am moving on, no, no doubt about it. And so, what are the things I'm looking for? Um, you better have, a, you better have. I mean, I find some egregious stuff. You know, I, if you think spelling is not important, think again. You know, if I find one spelling error, it's going to lead me to six others. You're, you're out of the, you're out of the. You're out of the fight. I'm not giving you a second chance. Attention to detail, bottom line. Um, the, if you have a clearance, that's something I'm looking for. It needs to rise to the top. Is it active? Um, when are you available? You know, If you're a transitioning military guy, you need to be very clear about that and don't play games. It's not, I'm going to retire in a year but I'm available in nine months because I'm going to go on terminal leave. I don't have time to do the math for you. <laughs> when are you available? And that's, you need to figure that out. I can't tell you when that is. And typically what that means is you're available when you're done with the military. You know, um, 
and done. I mean, done, done. Like, your term, take your terminal leave. That's my advice to everybody. You earned it, take it. You're never going to get it back. You know, so do, do take that time. Um, don't go back more than 10 years. Don't go back really more than eight years um, unless it's something really, really relevant that I need to know about and see, and it's relevant to that particular job. If it's just interesting, it's probably only interesting to you. <laughs> you know? But show growth. But show growth, yeah. Show growth, show progression. Don't, um, <laughs> I can't tell you how many resumes I see where someone has obviously read my rec really, really well because they've cut and pasted a lot of stuff from it into the resume. That's a big red flag for me. Um, you know, you're not impressing me by. And you're not you're tricking the yeah, system. Yeah, you're not tricking me into. So oh. it's, it, it's more manual than you think. You know, it's not some companies, I'm sure they have a big aggregator that finds and looks for keywords. That's me, you know. So looking through and I'm looking for, you know, technical skills and, and particular jobs I'm looking at. But um, then there's red flags on the interview part, or I mean the, uh, you know, when you're coming to a, a hiring event. Amazon doesn't accept resumes at hiring events. It's just a, I don't know why, it's just what we don't, we don't do that. Because we're there more as uh, ambassadors for the yeah. company to, to, to evangelize about Amazon, like, kind of like we're doing here. We don't accept resumes, but they, they'll do, they, they do have events where they'll let you plug in some information into the iPad and get into the talent acquisition pool. Or the Kindle. Yeah, or the, the Kindle. Kindle, yeah. Kindle, Kindle, Kindle. Um, I forgot where I was for a second. Um, yeah, so we're technology agnostic. Um, so I don't know. I'd probably say a lot of red flags. Yeah, you know, you know, it's I, amazing because when I leave those events, I have got all kinds of gripes and complaints. It's usually, it's usually attitude, you yeah. know, um, because there are people that come to those events, those hiring events, whether we accept resumes or not, who really expect you to like tell them they're get a job by the time they walk out of there, <laughs> and it's not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, the best thing I can do for you at, at those kind of events, and I tell this to everybody, is just, you know, use those events. I never went to those events thinking I was going to get a job. I used those events when I was transitioning to hone my 20-second elevator speech, you know, and they all sound the same after a while, but you got to get good at it. And, uh, and there's a big difference between the officers and the enlisted, and I'm really seeing it now. And it's like the officers come, and I, and I tell you, it's, I managed a bunch of people. Of course you did. You know, you were a lieutenant colonel. What else you got, you know? We're not looking for generalists. We're looking for specific skills. And so, you know, as much as the transition course and the services will tell you, you know, speak in big, broad terms and tell them how you led people, in a, in a, in a company like this, those things don't necessarily resonate because we're not always looking for people who are going to lead a sea of people. You know, you're looking for individual contributors who can also lead. And so there's a big difference in the kind of mentality that we have here. You know, technical account manager is, is a title, but Joel is a technical account manager. He doesn't necessarily manage people. He's managing his account. He's managing his, his portfolio. He may have a team once his account grows of other technical account managers as he's managing, but his role is not, in the truest of terms, a manager. Um, so I don't know if that speaks to the red flag issue. Something else that I know is a, the bulleted list, the alphabet soup of certifications and tests. Um, but we don't place a lot of stock in those. And when describing a position, a lot of times what, what I've seen is a list of like the original job rec. Like if you were a operations manager for XYZ company, your job rec would suddenly show up on your resume. And it's something I'm guilty of. I did it before, before the resume to Amazon. But one of the things that I would highly recommend is to, to outline your actual accomplishments, what you did, not what your team did, not what your company did, not what your, not what your boss did, but what you did. What was the situation? What task were you assigned with? What actions did you specifically take and what results did you drive home? Yeah. If you can capture all of that in one to four sentences, in, in your particular position, that's gonna, that's gonna resonate very strongly with any Amazonian reviewing your resume. That's a big red flag, not highlighting the results. We're big on the star format, situation, task, action, result. Any bullet you do use needs to be in that kind of format, yeah. and when you speak during an interview, it needs to be in that kind of format. Mm -hmm. 
when posed, when, when, when given a question, get, tell me about a time when, dot, 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 you need to be able to regurgitate in 20 seconds or less, here's the situation, here's the task I was given, here's the action I took, and here's the result. And too often I see on resumes, I was a leader of 50,000 people. Great. Or I optimized a system um, that was broken. Great. It, which resulted in a 70% increase in productivity over nine months, which is a month over month return of $60 million, whatever. Yeah. That resonates, you know. So, um, you know, you need to really scrutinize your own work and see is, what's the bang for the buck for these. If you're going to spend the time to do a resume, make sure it's, you're getting every, the juice is worth the squeeze and you're getting every, every value out of every word you're putting in there. Words have meaning. So. So why don't we collapse this format? I have a feeling they're going to start playing the music here soon. Um, we're, Matt and I are here uh, as long as you need us to talk, well, as long as there's not another session after us, but as long as you need to talk about any questions you have, any interest you have in Amazon, anybody that you know that you think would be a great fit at Amazon, we'd love to hear from them. Um, so thank you very much for coming in this afternoon. If you attended the 2 o'clock session, I hope that this was a little bit more uh, varied from that session and you got something out of it. Um, we're very thankful that you came here, and for those of you who served, yeah, our deepest gratitude. So yeah, thank thanks. you.